Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about why you can't find a cybersecurity job. If you've been looking for a long time and you haven't been able to get that first interview or get that first offer, and I'm also gonna be sharing tips on how to actually get your foot in the door for getting that first job in cybersecurity. Okay, so you've probably seen the statistic about how there's going to be 3.5 million jobs that are going to be available in 2025, that those cybersecurity jobs are going to go unfilled. So while this is definitely a true statistic and there are many companies out there trying to fill their cybersecurity roles and actually don't have enough candidates applying for these jobs, I'll still see many comments. I get many questions and messages from you guys as well as just what I've seen in the cybersecurity community especially for beginner and entry-level cybersecurity professionals that is still very hard and very competitive to get a job in cybersecurity. So while I do think cybersecurity is a very good field to go into, obviously there's job security, there's good salaries, as well as very interesting work to be done. I do think one thing to call out for all of these cybersecurity jobs being created is the fact that because this industry is relatively new compared to you know, 10, 20 years ago, where most schools probably didn't have a cybersecurity major, or if they did, it was really around digital forensics and definitely not as focused on all of the exploits and vulnerabilities that, that we have and know about and are alerted on nowadays. And even today, many schools are just starting their cybersecurity degree programs or or most of the cybersecurity boot camps have, have only been put in place in the last 10 years or so. So honestly, what I'm saying is that cybersecurity as a field is relatively new compared to relatively stable sectors in technology like software development, software engineering, systems analysts, those types of roles have been around for probably more than 20, 30, 40 years, even though, you know, it might have been different languages, different operating systems they were working on. But back then, security obviously was not first of mind for most companies, even big tech companies and software companies. The focus was really to build and not specifically on security. So nowadays, with cybersecurity becoming more and more front of mind for, for not only big tech companies, fintech, government agencies, but also smaller to mid-sized companies, companies that in the past may not have even worried about cybersecurity attacks, but nowadays, you know, anyone could be a script kitty and try to exploit your website if it's in the public internet, as well as even tech startups. Because when you're just starting out in an industry, you obviously want to get the trust of your users and they want to know whether their information is encrypted, whether you're following specific guidelines or policies around how to keep their information secure, as well as a lot more official certifications and compliance certifications out there for companies to get to be able to work with other companies or have other clients that are other businesses or vendors or etc. So with all of this, there's just a huge hiring boom for cybersecurity professionals, but a lot of the focus is on skilled cybersecurity professionals or cybersecurity professionals who already have experience on their resumes. So I think that's something important to note because obviously you hear that there's so many jobs in cybersecurity, but then maybe you're trying to apply and maybe you graduate with your associates or your bachelors or a boot camp, and then you come out thinking that you can find a job in one or two months. And then maybe that time frame becomes three to four months. And it can definitely be very daunting when you hear all these messages about, about how there's so many jobs available. You're on LinkedIn and every day you probably see 10 different posts about someone getting into their dream company and it can definitely be very disheartening and you're still trying to apply for a job and you're three months in which is why i wanted to make this video specifically talking about this topic that if you're someone who has zero to one year of experience in cybersecurity, so as basically any kind of graduate from boot camp or college as well as those who've had internship experience then in general it still may be more time consuming for you compared to a cybersecurity professional with maybe five to ten years of experience they could probably apply to any of those 3.5 million jobs and probably at least get an interview. So if you're someone who is just starting out looking for your first full-time cybersecurity job, just know that it's normal to be in the job search for three to four months, maybe even six months. It just depends on how often you're applying, what companies you're applying to, making sure that you're applying to roles that are the right fit for your skill level, your experience, as well as the specific tools that you have on your resume. I know it's very difficult to be in that job search process, especially when you have other real life things you have to deal with and maybe you're finishing up school or maybe you're working a part-time job or even a full-time job and you're trying to break into cybersecurity but all it takes is that one company to give you a chance give you an offer and that is really how you get your foot in the door to start your cybersecurity career so with all of this i do want to go into 
the actual things that you can do to better help yourself be prepared and be at least selected for an interview for the cybersecurity jobs. So one of the first things I really recommend looking into, if you've applied to more than 50, 100 job listings and you just have not heard back, then that is definitely a telltale sign that either you're just applying to jobs that, that are asking for way more years of experience or very niche skills that you don't have on your resume, or you just need to spruce up your resume a little bit. So if you're in the first bucket and you're applying to jobs asking for five to 10 years of experience, maybe go down to applying for the ones asking for three or so years of experience and under as long as that reflects your experience level. But in my opinion, I would always double that. You should still apply for jobs that are asking for two to three years of experience. And if you have five years of experience, I would still apply to jobs asking for seven to 10 years of experience because obviously you don't need that exact number of years to be cut off. You can let the recruiter decide that when they see your resume. But going back to the topic of your resume, if you're someone out of college or out of a boot camp, you probably have a pretty standard resume of your education, your skills, your experience, and then maybe some personal projects and volunteering and that's pretty much the typical graduate resume that you would probably see but one thing to keep in mind is basically the pyramid of experience so basically if you put all of the cybersecurity professionals that you know in a triangle then the bottom tier is going to be everyone who is a graduate or has less than one year of experience and just because of that there's likely going to be many more people with that level of experience compared to all the way at the top who are going to be people with maybe 20 years of experience and have really niche skills so essentially you're going to be competing with all of the other candidates at the bottom of the pyramid who are also just starting out in cybersecurity and like i mentioned in the beginning of this video, many people are just starting out in cybersecurity because schools are just starting to implement cybersecurity degrees and these cybersecurity boot camps are all relatively new. So because of that, you want to make yourself stand out as much as possible. And the first step is through your resume. So what I always recommend is, is adding some things to your resume that really make you stand out. And that is with free courses. Of course, you can choose paid courses, but I always recommend the free option because it's free and honestly, it only costs your time. And when you're a beginner, you likely are putting in time anyway to learning new skills, learning new tools. So there's gonna be a better investment for you compared to paying for something else when you've already paid for that degree or that bootcamp. So I actually made a video on the best free courses for cybersecurity for beginners. And I can link that below if you guys wanna check that out. So I'm not gonna repeat myself based on that video, but one course I wanna call out is, is the online Stanford cybersecurity intro courses. And those are honestly, I think one of the best resources that you can pick for yourself because Obviously, who doesn't know Stanford? Um, it's a very well-known school. It's known for its tech and startup things. And they actually have an intro to cybersecurity course that is completely free. And it is a MOOC or a massive open source online course. And it's really just another course for you to learn the cybersecurity foundations, which, which can add on to your existing knowledge of what you know about cybersecurity. But more importantly, it also really spruces up your resume and, and separates you out from every other candidate applying to these cybersecurity entry level jobs. Because there may be other 50 other bootcamp graduates that have graduated from a similar level bootcamp as you with very similar projects, very similar experience levels. But let's say you have the Stanford Intro to Cybersecurity course on your resume. And again, it was completely free for you to enroll in, but it just makes you stand out so much more compared to the other candidates. And because recruiters only look at your resume for such a short amount of time, you really want to add as many things as possible to make you stand out so that you can at least have that intro call with that recruiter to see if you're a right fit for the job. All right, the second tip I have for you guys is to find and learn the tools that you know you'll need on the job. So even for entry level of cybersecurity, there may be a lot of different jobs that you could be interested in. For example, cyber intelligence or an SOC analyst or a cybersecurity engineer. All these different roles in cybersecurity also have a niche set of skills that you may need on the job. So for whatever role that you're interested in, you can probably just Google cybersecurity engineer top skills top tools used and google will you know magically give you a list of tools that you may need on the job and what you're going to do is take those top five or so that you can find and the ones that you know sound interesting to you and then just look up a tutorial on youtube on how to use them and again youtube is a free resource 
obviously you can pay for courses if you want to but i still think that going the free route is probably going to be a better option at least for right now at least while you're still looking for a job and and likely don't want to spend on another course especially if you're just learning how to use a tool that you can easily find for free through google or youtube another way to help you find the most accurate list of tools to learn and look into is specifically going into let's say your dream company's website looking up the job that you're interested in and hopefully if they have it then they'll likely also have a list of preferred or required skills that they would also like you to know and typically that'll also include a list of tools that the company already uses so before you even join the company you know what cybersecurity stack or you know cybersecurity tools that they're using specifically what vulnerability scanners you're using there's so much that you can actually learn about a cybersecurity team in a specific company through that list of preferred requirements and sometimes it could just be a general list of you know firewalls and, and network security devices and that's also fine because then that gives you an idea of what to study for the actual interview for the job if you are moving forward with that role but the next thing i wanted to talk about is is how to get skills around hacking and and exploiting vulnerabilities so i know not everyone is interested in being a pen tester or a red teamer or or everything on the offensive security side but i do think that going into cyber security it is a very sought after skill to be able to understand and analyze review what an exploit is doing understand the mind of an attacker and there's lots of exercises on thinking like a threat actor and while it may not be what you want to go into there's a lot of value in knowing that and being able to answer questions about vulnerabilities or the OWASP top 10 or the difference between a vulnerability scanner and a pen test all these things are very likely to come up in a cybersecurity interview which by the way I have a video on on the cybersecurity topics that you may see in cybersecurity interviews as well as tips on general how to prepare for your cybersecurity interview. So I'll link those down below if you guys want to check those out. But if you're looking to get free experience learning how to hack or learning how to exploit some kind of vulnerability on a website, obviously don't go around to random people's websites. But there are websites out there that are that are purposely vulnerable for you to hack into, like the DVWA, or let's say you want to test out Nmap, which is a network scanning tool. Nmap also has a test endpoint or a URL that you can use to test. And of course, there's platforms like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, various capture the flags around the world to help you get that free experience of learning how to hack or learning about how a specific vulnerability works. And again, even if you're not going to be a pen tester, you may still get a question asking you what's cross-site scripting. And at that point, it really just becomes general knowledge. And if you're able to share an example of how you're actually able to complete a try hack me cross-site scripting challenge and talk about that during an interview, that honestly already puts you a cut above the rest who can only talk about these things and not just and not also talk about their experience actually getting hands-on. So the hands-on experience piece is very important even if you're not going into pen testing. And this is just one example of hands-on experience. I'm sure there's a lot of other areas in cybersecurity that you can get hands-on experience with that aren't just in pen testing. So I'll definitely do some digging around to see what is best for you to learn hands-on and then be able to talk about on your resume as well as in an interview. All right, the last thing I wanted to talk about is, is cybersecurity consulting slash volunteering. So this is something I talked about before in one of my previous videos. And while you don't have experience, I really think it'll be helpful for you to maybe reach out to some local shops like brick and mortar or mom and pop stores. And if they have a website, or if they have a network even, if they're sharing free Wi-Fi, then they probably have a network to help them come up with some cybersecurity plan. And for you to put in some research to be able to, to be able to provide them recommendations on how to become more secure with their virtual or online presence. And even though it is technically free, it's a lot more than just a personal project where you don't really have any real world impact. But with this, you can impact a real person or a real small business and it really shows through on your resume. So while you're learning about all these cybersecurity concepts and studying for interviews, another thing you can do on the side to prepare. So it really is a win-win where, where you're able to provide someone a service with cybersecurity recommendations or a cybersecurity plan that they pretty likely will not currently have. And then you'll also get that real world experience to put on your resume and be able to talk about in future interviews or even to help you provide insights into future jobs that you do. And because it's something that you're doing in your own time, you really are the one deciding how much time to put into it, especially for those of you who may be busy with full-time jobs or parenting or switching careers or still being in school. This really is just something to boost your experience a little bit and also get some real world experience to practice with. And who knows, maybe you'll really like cybersecurity consulting and maybe you'll just start your own cybersecurity consulting firm. 
All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys found it helpful and if you have any questions in the comments below. By the way, we also have a Discord now, so I would love for you guys to join. And it really is just a supportive community with all of you guys asking, answering questions, just getting to know each other, talking about certifications, job opportunities, career growth, being a cybersecurity bootcamp or college student. All of these are open topics. Welcome on the Discord. And I would love to have you join. And yeah, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other video topics that might be helpful to you. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.